Is the ketogenic or low carb diet going to wreak havoc on your kidneys? All right, let's address this in this video because there's some clear cut science that will give us the solid answer. So throughout the entirety of this video, I'll be explaining how the kidneys work, how blood flow to the kidneys works, and how the low carb diets and ketogenic diets actually affect us on a genetic level that could really change how we look at its overall effect on the kidneys. You are tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel, and the occasional general health video like this one. So make sure that you keep it locked in every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday when we have new videos coming out at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Also, I wanna make sure you hit that little bell button so you can turn on notifications whenever I go live. So let's go ahead and let's dive right into this. Before we talk about how the ketogenic diet actually affects the kidneys, we have to talk about what the actual issue is and what people are concerned with. You see, they're usually concerned with one of two things, okay? It's gonna be either kidney stones, they think the ketogenic diet is gonna lead them to produce kidney stones and have a clogged up kidney, right? The other thing is they think that it's gonna change their body's pH to the point where their urine is so acidic that it's causing all these issues. And then there's some people out there that think that you're gonna end up with actual lesions on your kidneys because of the ketogenic diet, simply because of the strain of the protein. So I'm gonna address all these and I'm gonna talk about how it works and hopefully ease your mind a little bit so that you can talk to people and explain that the ketogenic diet really isn't harming your kidneys. In fact, I might even be able to give you some science that proves that it's actually helping your kidneys. So first off, what is a kidney stone? Like what the heck is going on there? See, people think that kidney stones are just like the big calcification or excess protein that's globbing up. The thing is, is we all have crystals in our urine, okay? So every time that we use the restroom, we're flushing out a good degree of urine crystals, okay? These crystals that are formed in our kidneys. And these crystals are formed just from different minerals. The thing is, these crystals never become a problem unless they end up getting consolidated and end up, of course, clogging us up, right? Now in our bodies, in our kidneys, we have minerals and things that promote the crystallization, and we have things that inhibit the crystallization. And it's always a delicate balance. And when our body is in balance, they cancel each other out just enough, along with the dilution of enough fluid, and they just pass through as regular crystals. So crystals can only be formed in large deposits when we are either super, super dehydrated, we don't have high urine volume, or we have too much in the way of crystal promoters, or not enough in the way of the crystal inhibitors. So this doesn't really have a whole lot to do with keto or protein really for that matter. It's more about just making sure that you're just getting your balanced minerals in. And a lot of this quite honestly is determined at the genetic level more than anything else. Now the only link that we could potentially make with the ketogenic diet is that you can get a little bit more dehydrated when you're on a ketogenic diet simply because the body is being told to expel water. But here's the caveat to that, right? Okay, so yeah, you could be more dehydrated on a ketogenic state, but the reality is you're dehydrated because low levels of insulin tell your kidneys to expel more water. So sure, you're dehydrated throughout the body, but you're actually getting more urine flow because the low levels of insulin are demanding that your kidneys flush out extra water. So that's kind of debunked right then and there. Now, when we actually look at the protein side of things too, people think that too much protein is gonna harm the kidneys. Not necessarily the case. There's actually some studies out there that show that protein could be good for the kidneys, but we'll save that for another day. The simple fact is on a ketogenic diet, you're not eating a lot of protein. You're eating like 20% protein, somewhere in that ballpark, which quite honestly is usually less than what you'd eat if you weren't on a ketogenic diet. So that one's kind of debunked. So let's go ahead and talk about what's actually happening at a genetic level and how the ketogenic diet actually changes what are called CERT genes to actually improve the life of your kidneys. So there was a study that was published in the journal Kidney International, it took a look at nephropathy, okay? That's basically where the kidney is starting to die from different causes, okay? And what they found is that when the kidney was dying, there was usually a downregulation of certain genes. Okay, I'm gonna summarize this and make it simple, but the fact is when you're on a ketogenic diet, on a lower carb diet, they found that there was an elevation in what is called the CERT1 gene. Okay, these CERT genes, there's different classifications of them, CERT1, CERT3, et cetera, et cetera. These are genes that dictate certain things in the function of proteins within our body. So in this case, the increase in CERT1 genes ended up decreasing the genes that would promote the death of the kidneys. So what happens in the body, especially if someone that's doing a low carb diet, is this elevation or gene expression of the CERT1, CERT3, ends up telling the body to preserve the proteins. Okay, so basically what's happening is the body says, okay, he's deprived of glucose or he's fasting. So he's deprived of food or deprived of glucose. So it needs to start moving things from your stored tissue, your stored fat tissue, to be used as fuel. Well, this signals a pathway for your body to start protecting the proteins in it. 
So it actually allows a barrier of protection around the protein in your kidneys to preserve them because it says, wait a minute, this guy's starving, or wait a minute, this guy doesn't have glucose. We need to do what we can to preserve the proteins. So it literally activates a genetic process that saves your kidneys more. And that's what we're finding with low-carb ketogenic diet. It's actually good for the kidneys simply at the genetic level. The other thing that we have to look at is the filtering process of the kidneys, okay? The kidneys have a lot of little capillaries, okay? And they go through this filtration process. It's their job. Now, it's been hypothesized that when we have high levels of glucose in the blood, it increases sort of the force volume, it increases the flow of the blood, which sounds like a good thing, but not when it's in this case, right? We're flowing a lot of blood through small capillaries that cause the capillaries to ultimately collapse. And when they collapse, they scar. And this is how lesions can form within the kidneys. So of course, when you're on a ketogenic diet, low levels of insulin, lower levels of blood glucose, you're putting yourself in an optimal state to be able to control the blood flow that's going through this filtration part of the kidney. So a very, very good thing, obviously. Now lastly, I want to lean on one massive study. It was a meta-analysis that was published in the British Journal of Nutrition. Okay, this one took a look at over a thousand participants that were doing a low-carb or ketogenic diet. And what they found is that there was no link with the ketogenic diet any kind of renal function or renal impairment, right? There was just no issue, good, bad, or ugly. It didn't seem to change anything. And this was a meta-analysis that was comprised of a lot of different studies. So at the end of the day, stay hydrated, Get your sodium in, get your magnesium in, since magnesium is sort of an anti-crystal an anti former, and then you're going to be in good shape. The biggest issue that's ever going to arise is the fact that you could get dehydrated when you're on a ketogenic diet. But even then, it's not really going to affect your kidneys. And as long as your minerals are at play, you're going to be in perfect shape. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my channel, and make sure you comment if you have any ideas for future videos.